Hi there, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for this webinar about resource management. My name is Emma Graham, and I work here in the Customer Accounts team. Joining me on the webinar today are Paul Souter and Luke Marshall, who have been working in resource management for over six years now and help deliver hundreds of projects um, to lots of businesses. Uh, they are going to share some of their tips for um, implementing a successful project, as well as some of the options around hardware and applications. We'll also be showing you a demonstration, so uh, make sure you have your QR codes ready. Also, at the end of the session, uh, we'll have some time for questions. Uh, just write your question, please, uh, in the box, in the question box at, at the uh, bottom right-hand corner. I don't know about you, but ev everyone, even friends who are not involved in IT, can usually relate uh, or understand the frustrations of issues associated with booking a room or resource for a meeting. Today, we're going to cover some common scenarios our systems can help you overcome. Wasting time trying to find an appropriate room is a classic example, either on the spot or in advance. Something we like to call room squatting, the dreaded reoccurring meeting or use bad habits of booking a huge meeting room for only two people. Another common problem is the same meeting rooms are uh, always empty while others are constantly booked. And even worse, which I'm sure you've come across, are rooms that are booked constantly but empty on the day, the classic no-shows. As we all know well, this is not just an inconvenience for staff, it's a hot topic for the business as a whole as there are significant savings to be made by utilising meeting rooms as well as office space and desks. So, are room screens a luxury? Well, we wanted to talk to you about this concept today, the concept of using room screens as a way of tackling these issues, but we wanted to address the common misconception that screens are seen to be an extravagance. In reality, it's quite the reverse in our experience, Implemented properly, they can lead to many benefits, such as being viewed really positively by staff, booking through a screen saves a lot of time, having a booking system gives everyone a unified approach um, through the familiar outlook calendaring. The look and feel is professional for visitors and staff, and there are real tangible savings through young utilization as well as much be better visibility and management of resources for staff and IT teams, including facilities as well. But there are ways of achieving the same results and delivering an enterprise service, support and scalability, but in a way that reduces costs. So this is what we want to cover with you today in this webinar. I'm going to hand over to Paul now to discuss some of the screen options with you. Thanks, Emma. Um, yeah, based on my support suit, I'm a uh, Senior account manager with with Essential. Um, yeah, in basic, so what I'm going to cover here is, is is really working on the different options in the types of screens we're looking at, especially when it comes to on a budget, trying to get a more cost effective approach. We um, our solutions are a, a little bit different, really, than the uh, the other solutions out in the marketplace, because often the marketplace have, would have a a screen with a, with built in software, and really you're just limited to that that option only. Um, Ours is a software solution, so with that, it gives us a lot of flexibility and uh, and the opportunity as well to be a lot more cost effective in, in our approach. Um, but uh, but first of all, I suppose some of the key things which sometimes drives you choosing the appropriate screen is is the logistics, and this is something which gets missed out at the beginning. So Paul would touch on it right at the start. Logistics are things like um, when not it's PoE, power over Ethernet or Wi-Fi connection, which you're going to have to the screen, uh, glass walls or in walls or on walls. It, these sort of options need to be considered because we, we have a lot of flexibility and enables us to be able to address your, your requirements. And what we can do with the same as we've done with a lot of our customers is deliver the right solution for that requirement. So, talking about on off-the-shelf devices, the good thing about being a software solution is it is it's not agnostic to any particular screen. We can go with iPads. Um, we've even got clients with um, uh, iPad Minis on, on the wall, but we can look at Androids, Windows. Um, we can differ the style sheets and the branding, so uh, we can really portray the, the company image. And also. 
being a software solution, we can, we can approach other functions as well. So things like authentication, so we can actually capture the people who are actually booking or, or maybe even not booking if they don't turn up. We can capture who's who's uh, responsible for the booking. We can also capture sort of check-in and checking out. Um, we can display attendee lists, report equipment issues, um, and I've already mentioned the branding, so we can really make sure the image reflects your, your company. Um, one of the key things I would say probably from our customers when we're talking to uh, to them is, is really having the ability to release that resource back into the pool of resources if no one checks in. So by doing that, you'll get a much better utilization. So we talked about off-the-shelf devices. Um, there's other ways of maybe doing this on, on a budget. You could look at overview screens or sometimes called kiosk screens. Now, this basically enables us to cover more than one item on one piece of hardware. So to give an example, we've got customers like Coventry NHS, VP, uh, Airbus. They're, they're representing around about sort of 50 to 100 desks, plus maybe another 20, 25, 50 rooms on one screen. So you don't need a piece of hardware outside each room, hence be able to keep the costs down. Um, I'll show you an example of this um, so you can see what it looks like. Um, this actually is a screenshot from uh, a kiosk screen in BP. Um, and what you can do, you basically would have a screen maybe in a reception area or in a lobby area where there's a few meeting rooms or desks. And it's basically navigable floor plans like this. So you can go up to the screen. It's interactive. You just press on, on the, the, uh, the, maybe the, the area or the floor which you're looking for in, in the building. And uh, in this case with BP, if I went and pressed on the Ground West button, for instance, it takes me to this part of the, the building. And it's really simple. It's green's available, red is busy. So it's very easy for users to just go in, do an ad hoc booking, or if they've already got a pre-selected uh, booking, if they had a room there, for instance, it could, it could uh, scroll their name on there so you can see that's their, their booking. And they can check in from the kiosk and then move into the, uh, into the room. Um, if on this example I wanted to say, look, if you see the green belt box in the middle, if I was looking for a hot desk and BP have called it a green belt, if I pressed on that, it again will then zoom me into that, that green belt of desks, and here is where I can select the appropriate desk uh, for, for myself. And the good thing is with kiosk is you've also got the search um, uh, um, ability as well, so you can actually search for individuals or uh, name meeting rooms, um, and that will then take you exactly to the floor plan sheet where it is, so the, so they can get the directions also. Um, one of the other good things about these uh, kiosks is, and also with the, the, the screens as well, is it's very visual. It's a very physical item that are often users can embrace. You know, when we're looking at a lot of booking systems, um, it's usually the screens, which is what people remember and people can really interact with. Um, and it cuts it so visual, it, it offers a sort of a good feel to the user base um, that they know they're working for a sort of progressive company who's embracing technology, but also quite good for external clients coming in as well. So um, it's obviously giving a, a professional image. <clears throat> okay, so we looked at off-the-shelf devices, and we also looked at the kiosk screens, overview screens. Another option is color-coded devices. Uh, we've got a device called a QB, <clears throat> and slightly different, again, than anything else out in the marketplace, because a lot of the systems out there are sort of like these PIR systems, where basically they they uh, sort of capture you at the desk and monitor you at the desk. But if you went to a meeting or to a toilet or, or went off to get a drink, sometimes it can check you out. We've got total control over this, because it actually, the way you check in and check out is by using your access cards already. Um, if you haven't got a card, then you, you can actually tilt them. But, but you can check in and check out. And we've got companies like uh, VW, Scottish Parliament, um, Gazprom, to name a few, who are using this. Um, originally designed for hot desks, but are also using it maybe book rooms instead, instead of having a, a screen on the outside. Um, and this just enables people to be able to sort of use them either on ad hoc basis or pre-booked, similar as, as a screen. The next element I was going to show you is even even more on a budget, really. We had a customer in, uh, with headquarters in France who were looking to uh, book 
display rooms without any hardware at all. Um, so what we've done is, like I say, it's a relatively new approach, but using mobile devices, um, using a smartphone, you can, with a QR reader, you can go up, scan the QR code, and it will show you what's available, if it's available. Often it's with a very small indicator light on the outside, so you can see if it's green or red, again, so you've got easy visibility. But you can actually um, go in and just quick scan, see the availability of the room, and even book it from your smartphone. But instead of me talking about that, if you've got a QR code reader, then it'd be great to have that uh, available and ready to go. Um, and uh, if, if I just move on to the QR code here, you can see the QR code. So if you've got a QR reader, if you scan this code, it will show you how it works. Now, with this code, it, it, it is only read-only um, at this stage because otherwise everyone's going to be booking at the same time and it'll be a bit chaotic. Um, so what I'm going to do is show you what happens if we scan this as well for the people who don't have a reader. So if I just quickly scan this, and as you can see, this is what, what will come up. So on this, this particular room, 101, it shows, you, it shows us the, the next meeting and any future meetings for today. Um, if I want any more information, I just go up to the top left here. Normally, if this wasn't a read-only option, I would have a book button here where I could then go in book, and it would give me options for time, hours, uh, uh, maybe later on in the day if I wanted to book. Uh, obviously, only if it's available. It won't let me do it if it's if it's booked. Um, if maybe it's not a glass wall and you can't see into the room, <clears throat> I can press info and it will show me what's in the room as well by these useful icons and, and uh, labels. The other good thing is if I've actually been in the room and uh, I've been using the room and realized the projector's broken, for instance, I could just click on the projector and it say, do you want to report an issue? Uh, so I could say yes or, or no, whatever the case may be. So it's a very simple, very effective way, um, and very cost-effective as, as well, because we're not dealing with any hardware, to be able to just go up and manage your rooms. So um, hopefully that's shown you, a f uh, you know, three or four different ways of how we're helping organizations uh, implement these type of solutions. What I'm going to do now is pass you over to Lucas, who's going to go into those customer examples in a little bit more detail to show you how um, and what we have done. So over to you, Lucas. Okay, thanks, Paul. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Lucas, as, as Paul said, and um, <clears throat> I'm a resource management specialist at Essential. I've been worked alongside Paul for about six, seven years on, on these products now. So we, we've we've done a fair amount with these products. So um, yeah, we we talk from a, a fair amount of experience now. Um, <clears throat> um, we've looked at some of the technology available with Paul. Um, and particularly interesting is the, the QR code um, addition. That's that's a really new addition to, to me, actually. And uh, um, we're really it'd be really good to see how that develops. Now you can look at uh, you know booking rooms without even hardware outside the room. It's just you know no more than your mobile phone. So that all looks great. So um, as I say, we looked at the technical side of things and the technology. Uh, now we're going to look at some, in some considerations that you're going to be thinking about when planning your own project. And hopefully we can offer you a few sort of. Um, top tips, I suppose, uh, things you might want to think about. Um, we'll start by just looking at a couple of projects we've worked on quite recently um, that have led to real business benefits in the organisation, just to give you a bit of insight. Uh, so we're going to start with Airbus, as you can see on the screen. Um, now, Airbus recently um, completed a multi-million pound uh, development at Aerospace Park in Bristol, um, which is very close to where we're based. Um, it's a really impressive site. I can vouch for that because I actually drive home past it every day on my own from work. Um, it's home to 4,500 staff, and as you can see on the screen there, there's an awful lot of meetings uh, per month uh, in the Bristol site, 11,000 actually, and there was 11,000 meetings a month before they developed the site, and there's still 11,000 meetings a month required now that the uh, site has been developed. Now, the, the difference is, uh, and the, here's where the challenge is, the new site has actually got 33% fewer meeting rooms than before. Um, so you don't, you know, it's not too difficult mass there to work out that they've got a significant challenge into satisfying demand for meeting rooms. Um, and this is where we came in, really. The Airbus did some research, and they realized they needed a system to, to manage these meeting rooms and to make sure that they could cope uh, with, this, with the strain of all the meetings that need to be um, uh, created. So um, they'd already made some decisions. They, they decided that they really needed something, a system that was going to integrate with their outlook environment. 
this was going to make it easy and intuitive for their for their users. Um, um, they wanted to sign up on meeting those shows now. I imagine those listening to the call, it seems to happen everywhere, have a problem with sometimes a meeting is booked and the meeting room is empty because people haven't turned up and that's what the Airbus was seeing quite a lot of. Uh, so they really wanted to tighten up meeting those shows. Um, and the way they were hoping to be able to do that was finding a process for automatically freeing up the room for reuse if if somebody doesn't turn up within a, a particular you know, uh, period of time. So um, they've managed to achieve the, the utilization of rooms they, they want. The, the rooms you know, are working efficiently. They're managing 11,000 meetings with 33% less meeting rooms. Um, well, how they're doing this is they have a room tablet outside each room, uh, which is similar to what Paul showed earlier. Um, and what they have is a system where an organizer would walk up to the tablet before uh, they go into the meeting room and check in to the meeting room. Um, now, what they have is a five minute check in window uh, at the start of their meeting. Um, if no one arrives within five minutes of the start of the meeting and checks in, then the meeting room is released back into the pool, back into Outlook. Someone else can book it. Um, I mean, five minutes does, it may sound a little bit harsh, and you know, you can choose your uh, time frame. It could be 15 minutes or half an hour, but five minutes is really what worked for them. That's what they need. It was actually crucial for them to make sure that they could uh, manage the demand. Um, it basically means they run a very tight ship. It works for them. There's a, a three strike rule. So if you don't turn up for three meetings on a trot, then you, you're out. If you, if you like, and you, you, you know, there's some kind of, uh, you know, ban on, a, on, on booking meeting rooms. Uh, what they found is room utilization has improved by over 25%. Um, and they're making a saving of over 3,000 hours per month. So not bad, really. And uh, the, the key to the success and, and this is something which will be a recurring theme, is, is the check-in process, having this ab ab ability to release rooms that aren't being used and making them available for someone else to use. So um, that's Airbus. Um, just another project I'll mention is, is Genesis Housing. Now, this one is quite close to my heart because this was one of my accounts, and um, uh, I could probably talk all day about this, this project, but I won't. But um, what they did is uh, they went for a rigorous two-year change program at Genesis. Um, and um, they, amongst other things, they uh, changed their corporate calendaring system from from Google Mail to Office 365, which is a, a huge project within itself. Um, but to top that, they also had this project where they were going to significantly reduce their office pr uh, footprint. They wanted the business wanted to save money, and they were going to do this by moving staff into new, more efficient workplaces, mainly uh, around London. On top of that, they've also implemented a flexible working environment and desk sharing on a, on a very large scale, and this incorporates most employees in the business. Um, so just a few things that they had to, um, they were concerned about there, uh, lots of things going on. But based on the changes and based on the change program, it's been a great success and have actually calculated a £1 million a year, year on year savings in accommodation costs. So pretty impressive. Um, uh, they've now got a, a much more streamlined estate, a more efficient workspace, um, more flexibility for employees, and and huge costs in, in lots of different areas. Uh, benefits to staff of the new environment are very tangible. Um, the hot desking makes it easy to work collaboratively, so you can sit and sit with the team that you need to sit with on that particular day for that uh, for that project you're working on. Uh, less travelling. They've got let lots of sites around London. Um, there are HQs in Camden now. If you don't need to go, if you live in East London, you might not need to go all the way into Camden. You might want to try and find a, a desk at one of the more local sites um, and just go and work there if there's a desk available. Um, so that that works pretty well for them. Um, people can find and book resources using their, their normal Outlook environment, um, um, and also book resources on the spot when they arrive at the site via touch screens outside rooms and in reception areas. Uh, importantly, there are several options for reallocating the space and ensuring the resources are available to use when it's no longer required. Again, similar theme to Airbus, really, this ability to check out and release these unused, un unused rooms. Um, feedback we get from Genesis is the system works because it's simple um, to use both from Outlook and also with the screens. Um, the screens are great for an at-a-glance visual representation. Um, Paul showed you some images before. Obviously, we can provide uh, better demos where we can actually show you these these things in action live uh, if you want to have a look after the, the webinar. Um, 
There's also plenty of prompts to remind you of your desk or room booking so that it gives people the opportunity to cancel if they no longer need it. Uh, the slide that's been up for uh, a minute or so now is showing some of the stats which back up what uh, Genesis have achieved. Um, we have got a case study on our website for the Genesis Housing Association and um, we'd be happy to talk to you about it in more detail if, if afterwards um, if that would be useful. So, okay, so we've looked at a couple, looked at a couple of projects. I'm going to move on to... I guess some of the key challenges um, and things you might want to think about when implementing or planning a, a project. Um, one of the key ones really is how, to, how are you going to make people use it? Um, actually, it's probably the clinching uh, issue really. If it's not easy for these staff to work with, then the rest is going to be academic really. Um, our tips would be make it easy for them and also make the benefits of the new processes very clear. Um, integrating a new system with your calendaring system, Outlook for instance, is, is a bit of a no-brainer really. It's going to make it easier to adopt, it's going to mean minimal training, people are going to be working with a familiar environment, something they're used to, rather than having to you know, learn a whole new set of tricks, somewhere different to log into. So basically what we're, giving, we're doing is giving people more with what they're already working with. Um, research tells us that desk-based staff spend about 80% of the time logged on to email, so the value of integration with this environment, you know, shouldn't be underestimated. Um, it also offers the flexible working potential for highly mobile users to find and book resources on the go via their tablet or their, their mobile phone. Um, if you do look at implementing a system which is separate to Outlook or sits alongside Outlook, um, will you have to book coworkers in rooms separately? Will users have to log into a separate system? Are you going to be duplicating the information? Are you going to be doing it in your desk and room booking system and then doing it again in Outlook? So all things you need to think about. Um, Another idea of getting people on board with a new process is to make sure they're aware of the benefits of the system they're going to be using. Um, a more flexible working environment like the one at Genesis um, fits in with both um, the corporate goals of the company and also the user's lifestyle as well. Um, people have more visibility of the resources around them, they have self-service access to book and book things themselves. Um, screens, again, they're visual and interactive, they're very user-friendly. And the benefits in terms of increased visibility and ability to check in and out of rooms and to cancel or extend meetings is very obvious. Um, room and desk booking screens, we're probably labouring this point, but room and desk booking screens are definitely not just about improved professional image. The benefits are very clear and they can allow you to improve the utilisation of your space dramatically. Um, the next one I'm going to move on to is, um, is the fact that projects tend to work best when you get buy-in from all the key parties. Um, so, you know, getting buy-in from everybody. Uh, we've impl implemented, um, I think Emma mentioned at the start of the webinar, we've, we've done over 100 uh, resource management projects now, and I've certainly found that planning is key when implementing a solution in this area. Uh, projects tend to be a bit of a combined effort. You know, the FM team, you know, they've got to get what they need to deliver their services. IT are going to have to implement the, a system and support it, and obviously the end users are going to have to work with it. So it really is a combined effort, um, and then you obviously bring project managers into the mix as well. Um, project, the projects do get there in the end, um, but the most seamless ones that we see are the ones where you get early buy-in from IT. Um, you get strong project management, and once the system's in place, you have a couple of internal product champions to help the change process and be a point of contact in-house, um, and possibly a, a bridge between the FM and IT teams as well. So um, the last uh, top tip, I suppose, is um, is to do with flexibility. You should be really, you know, looking for flexibility in the solution because, um, as we found, and as you know, it's fairly obvious, um, a solution does need to be flexible to a certain degree. Each individual organisation has a totally different set of requirements. Uh, again, the planning stage at the beginning of the implementation is crucial and it allows you to consider the options um, and obviously we can help with this. So consider hardware, you know, do you want to source your own, have you got things like iPads or tablets um, around the organisation you can utilise anyway? Uh, do you want to have screens outside of rooms or do you want to have, um, you know, central kiosks which manage multiple resources? might be a way of sharing, saving on hardware and maybe even this QR, QR code option or maybe a more simple indicator of whether a resource is, uh, is busy or free like a QB. Uh, booking options, do you want to restrict all bookings to be an advanced fire outlook or do you want to let people book resources on the spot? Uh, do you want to allow people to book resources via a mobile device? Uh, policies and permissions, um, so self-service access for users is, is you know, great in theory but do you want to have some booking restrictions in place? Um, this is where the authentication on screens might come in for instance. 
And just finally, reporting. Uh, reporting can provide you a lot of value, um, um, particularly in regards to utilisation, uh, and can help you make important decisions about your estate. Um, the interactive booking element of the screens really means you can take reporting to a new level. You can interrogate how long meetings are lasting for. Are they start, starting on time? Who are your no-shows? Who who's no-showing multiple times? Um, so you can get, you know can make things really interesting and later make important decisions. Um, reporting allows you to get very granular in ensuring that uh, office space is used as efficiently as possible. And that, once again, importantly, that your bookable rooms or desks are available for people to use a maximum amount of the time. Uh, so I mean that's that's it for, for now. We've got obviously lots more tips we can give you after the webinar. Um, hope to some of those are useful. Uh, I'm going to hand back over to Emma now to maybe go to the question stage and and, and wrap things up. Brilliant. Thank you, Luke, and thank you, Paul, for the great tips for delivering a successful resource management project and demonstration of some of the hardware available. Um, I'm just going to recap on some of the key points um, that they both highlighted. Uh, Paul talked us through some of the screen options, so think about what will fit the building design, evaluate screen and kiosk options, or the less hardware-intensive QBs, QR codes, and web apps for making bookings. Um, Luke mentioned include everyone in the project, from the key users to the new of the new system, to IT and facilities teams, and even the communications team. So everyone is on the same page, working towards the same goal. Get buy-in from key stakeholders, ideally from the top down. And strong project management is really key here too, as uh, Luke emphasised. Planning and design. Uh, from my experience um, of working in the after-sales care team here, the most successful projects with excellent user uptake are the ones where time and resource has really been put into the planning and design phases. Uh, Luke mentioned alignment. Uh, make it easy as possible for users to adopt the new system by integrating with existing familiar processes through Outlook as well as clear communication and training about changes to processes and the new ways of working. Invest in appearance. Something Paul covered briefly, uh, the impact of a smart booking system on staff and visitor experience. Staff really appreciate using the latest technology at work um, and will take pride in their corporate identity in buildings, or more pride in their corporate identity in buildings. This, uh, this can lead to potentially greater job satisfaction and, uh, and higher staff retention. Visitors also appreciate the visual aspect and professional look and feel of touchscreens and kiosks when they arrive at your building or office. This kind of system is also ideal if you're planning a new office or consolidating office space or moving to a new floor uh, or potentially introducing a flexible working uh, program like Genesis did. Let us help you understand what systems you want in place to facilitate the new working environment and how to roll this out, as well as considerations around the practical aspects of the technology, such as cabling and electricity points, uh, just to mention a few. So I think that concludes the uh, sort of presentations and, 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 uh, for now in the session. Uh, we've got time um, for some questions. We hope you found it useful and it shed some light on the things to consider when looking at implementing a, a room booking system. So, um, you know, if you do have any questions, please feel free to write them in the, the questions box. Um, it does. Look, we've had one already, actually, Emma. Um, oh, brilliant! Uh, which has come through, and it states: Can this solution be applied to other resources like car parks? Uh, well, the answer is yes. Um, it's easily done, um, but parking can be a uh, can be a very scarce resource, so it, it's it's usually a quite a tricky thing to manage. Um, we did it at Airbus, and uh, who basically massively reduced their number of spaces which they had for their staff in, in their new development. So it's something we have done, uh, but don't underestimate sort of the people element of impl implementing this because it was quite a tricky thing just to uh, get the workflow and the processes in place. Um, any other questions? Wait. Yeah, should we should we take the one about Office 365? Yeah, yeah. Luke, um, perhaps you'd like yeah. to ask, okay. ask well, if it works in Office 365. Well, yeah, okay, that's a, that's an easy one. Yes, it does. Um, uh, we Genesis actually the, the implementation that I was talking about um, a few minutes ago. Um, they're on Office 365. They moved from Google Mail to Office 365. So obviously, you let us know which version you're planning to move in, uh, to move to. Uh, but certainly with the, the screen solution, Resource Express. Pretty much all versions of uh, 365 are compatible. Uh, we do have some other uh, room booking solutions where it's version dependent, but yeah, let us know. Uh, we're happy to talk talk with you about it and let you know anything about technical prerequisites. 
Brilliant. Well, thanks everyone again for joining us on the webinar. Um, do get in touch. All our contact details are on the screen there. 